Okay, now let's get to the energy. Uh, energy flows, nutrient cycle, right? We just saw um, the parts where nutrients, those lysosomes and vacuoles and how they help with nutrients. Let's talk about energy. Um, and that's done in mitochondria. You can think of mitochondria as the powerhouse uh, of the cell. Uh, so that's where energy is, is made. Um, and so when, when they're organelles and they carry out cellular respiration in nearly all eukaryotic cells, not all. Isn't that interesting? Um, so cellular respiration takes that chemical energy in food like glucose uh, and turns it into something called ATP, which stores energy. Um, and so there's two compartments, the intermembrane space, it's the narrow region between the inner and outer membrane, and the mitochondrial matrix. Now the matrix uh, has mitochondrial DNA. Um, so your mitochondria in each cell has its own DNA for, for replication. It's got ribosomes and lots of in enzymes that uh, catalyze some of the reactions for cellular respiration. So here's mitochondria in an animal cell in the different uh, compartments. You should be able to recognize that for the test. Uh, chloroplasts are what take the photons, the light photons, help convert it into the chemical energy. So photosynthesis, conversions of light energy from the sun into chemical energy. And the chloroplasts are in different um, compartments. It's compartmentalized. And so between the outer and inner membrane, you have a, a thin intermembrane space. And inside that, you have a thick fluid called stroma, not stoma. There's an R there, stroma, and be able to uh, distinguish between stroma and stoma. Um, and the fluid, it has the chloroplast DNA. Um, so uh, the chloroplasts have their own DNA, just like uh, mitochondria do. Um, and so uh, then you also have this network of interconnected sacs called thylakoids, um, and those are stacked kind of like poker chips, and those are granum, and we should have our, yeah, here's our uh, um, graphic. So remember stroma, that thick fluid, the granulum, the stacks of thylakoid, and each individual one is a thylakoid, and the whole thing is a chloroplast. Uh, both both mitochondria and chloroplasts have DNA and ribosomes. Um, and when we look at the structure uh, of DNA uh, and ribosomes in mitochondria and chloroplasts, it's very similar to that uh, found in prokaryotic cells. Um, and this led to the idea of endosymbiosis. Um, and so uh, mitochondria and chloroplasts were formerly small prokaryotes. Uh, and then uh, uh, they um, uh, would always struggle. They could make energy, but they would always struggle to get food uh, to make energy. Um, and the cells could uh, make lots of food, but always struggled for energy. And so um, you have this endosymbiotic theory that, say, they began working together and living, uh, the mitochondria and chloroplasts began living within larger cells. The larger cells would provide them with food, and the mitochondria would provide the cell with energy. And so it became a kind of a win-win situation. And so... Um, here you have kind of a graphic of the idea, your host cell, it's engulfing the mitochondria, uh, and then the chloroplast for, for plants. Um, so that is the energy um, portion of, of chapter four, and so we're moving on. I think there's only one other section, and we will be done with chapter four. Um, I hope you're keeping up with your homework online uh, and uh, uh, keeping up with these quizzes.